All right, broad changes to the state's cap on property tax increases did not materialize this legislative session. Its two priorities of the New York State Association of School Business Officials were addressed, including allowing for growth in payments in lieu of taxes and BOCES capital expenses as well. But the association still has some concerns. Joining me now to explain more is the executive director, Michael Borges. Michael, thanks very much for your time. Great. Thanks for having me. So, uh, first of all, let's talk about these changes to to the uh, uh, state property tax cap. Some folks in the uh, local government and uh, school district arena here in Albany have said it's actually kind of amazing that any changes to the tax cap were approved, considering it was kind of Andrew Cuomo's baby back in 2011. Right. Um, you know, our, our organization um, has been uh, badgering the legislature for the past three years since the inception of the, of the tax cap to make uh, minor technical changes to the cap uh, to allow school districts and local governments um, a better way to implement the tax cap and making it less punitive. And we were told, yep, right, it's the governor's baby. We're never going to make any changes. You know, there's no appetite for confronting the governor on this issue. So uh, we were delighted, actually, that finally we, we've gotten some traction in making minor changes, but, you know, still helpful changes to the tax cap. And, uh, you know, I think that it's a step in the right direction and uh, they'll be beneficial to a lot of different school districts in different ways. Well, I mean, some of the changes could seem potentially esoteric to, yeah. to, to, to viewers, especially when it comes to this issue, which, you know, is seriously a big one, though, for, for anybody that owns a home in the suburban counties and upstate, et cetera. But uh, the pilot provision is something that I know had been uh, really fought for for a number of years from a number of uh, school district advocates. Uh, just what what sort of impact is that going to have? Well, um, actually, we, we, we had teamed up three years ago with uh, uh, Brian McMahon and the Economic Development Council, and they represent IDAs that, yeah. also, that issue the pilots. And because we both realized that if school districts um, were adversely impacted by how pilots were calculated in the tax cap, that they would oppose pilots being issued, and that was indeed the case. There was sort of a, a groundswell of opposition by school districts to IDAs issuing pilots. So their organization and our organization got together and came up with some possible solutions, which we uh, talked to the Division of Budget and the governor's staff and the legislature about. And one of them was, which is what they finally adopted, was adding pilots to the tax-based growth factor, basically uh, counting the value of a pilot property um, in this thing called a, the tax-based growth factor that the tax and finance uses to calculate your, your allowable levy. Right. Because, again, it's a technically, or at least it's always advertised as a 2% cap on property right, tax right. increases, but it really Is not. isn't, especially for yep. school districts, because right. there's a whole other formula that's involved here right. as well. I mean, each, each school district has its own cap, basically, and, right. and uh, you know, it, with exclusions, without exclusions, so it depends on, on what, the, uh, what each school district has. So. If you're a business manager at a school district, though, just to, as an aside, how has that been living under the cap for the last four years where every year you've basically got a different levy increase that you have to deal with? I mean, has that made planning difficult? Well, yeah, I mean, school districts, above all else, like stability and be able to plan things out in advance. Um, so, you know, where we have the ups and downs uh, in terms of state aid and the tax cap, we, w we would rather just have a smooth number. And that's one of the things we actually uh, advocated for, which didn't get adopted, was for having doing away with the 2% or the CPI, whichever is less, right. we were advocating for just a flat 2%. So that way, from one year to the next, we kind of know what our numbers are going to be so we can plan accordingly. Because we just can't hire and fire teachers every year and close classrooms and close buildings. And so we need stability. Our, our taxpayers want stability. They want to be able to know from one year to the next that, you know, geez, you know, we're going to get 2% this year, 2% this year, 2% the next year, whatever that's going to be. They don't want to see 7% increase one year. 10% drop the next year. It's just too confusing for everybody. Uh, let's talk about the uh, BOCES capital expenses right. as well. I mean, I know there were some allowances for capital expenses writ large, I believe, in the original cap. Adding BOCES, however, what does that do? Well, uh, right now, one of the exclusions that school districts can use to increase their tax levy, uh, levy, levy limit is uh, their own capital expenditure. So when they build a building or uh, do renovations, the, the, co the local cost of that is used as an exclusion to the tax cap. And we've been advocating for the 
the school district's share of a BOCES project. So when typically a school district will renovate a wing of a building or maybe build a new uh, wing to accommodate a BOCES program, educational program, like special ed. BOCES provide a lot of special ed or career technical education, and sometimes school districts will build or renovate a facility to accommodate that. And so our expenses for that portion of, of that facility were not being excluded from the cap. Uh, the tax cap just like our own capital expenditures. So this recognizes our share of that BOCES project and adds it to the tax cap exclusion. So when you talk about real dollars here for something like this, what does that mean for a school district? Well, I mean, overall, I would say about 70% um, of school districts will benefit from the uh, the BOCES uh, capital exclusion. Probably 40% will benefit from the, uh, the pilot uh, issue being addressed. And uh, I think the, the BOCES capital projects based on last year's numbers around $23 million. Not totally huge in terms of the overall spending of school districts, right. which is around $58 billion. But for individual school districts, this would mean a lot. Do you feel like you got your foot in the door on the tax cap changes? Yes. Uh, again, I, th I think it's just the beginning. Um, you know, as part of our press release and our analysis, the, the, uh, the estimates so far this year for the CPI for inflation is a negative number. So that means going what into would next that do? year. I've heard that before, yeah. but what, what would that actually do if you've got like a negative CPI? Right. Well, uh, <laughs> how would that work? <laughs> well, that's a good question. Let's find out. <laughs> Let's find out. Right. No, I mean, uh, what, what right right now is the you know the tax cap for this year was one point six two. So okay. uh, next year the uh, the inflation rate is projected to be e either at zero or a negative number. Mm -hmm. And that's according to both the Division of Budgets state planning document and the U.S. Uh, Bureau of Labor, Labor Statistics, BLS. They come out with those numbers. And so right now the trend is to either have a zero infl inflation or CPI for next year or a negative number. Mm -hmm. and what does that mean for school districts? That means practically no increase right. or less than what they had the previous year. And with rising costs for pensions and health care, I mean, we're going to hit another brick wall. And all the, all the folks that we just hired back and all the programs that we just restored, thanks to a very generous uh, school aid increase this year, will all be lost again next year if we have a 0% tax cap. Obviously, cap. then that would put on pressure for both not just the governor, but state lawmakers who are up for re-election next year. Right to probably give you guys an even bigger aid increase next year. Yeah, I mean, in order to offset like a 0% tax cap, you'd have like, you need at least a $2 billion increase in school aid. Really? Yeah. And yeah. what would that mean? I mean, uh, well, first of all, you would have the GEA being well, fully yeah. restored. Right, too. the GEA, I think there's like 400 or so million dollars left of that. And I, we, I think everybody has agreed that the GEA will disappear next year. So that'll right. be done. Uh, and then the foundation aid formula still has to be fully funded. So there's still like four point something billion dollars worth of foundation aid that still needs to be released right. uh, and allocated. So, I mean, we're still owed money from previous decisions and the GEA, so we're looking forward to that being addressed as well. Uh, just looking forward, I mean, we got this tax cap now uh, reapproved. I think, for the next four, four years. years. 2019 yes. is right. when it expires again. Um, you know, again, talking about potential changes once again, is this going to be something where we'll see not necessarily the 2% the or the CPI go away, but you know, maybe a new debate on the two-thirds majority for overriding the cap. We don't see a lot of school districts overriding the cap really at all, including counties as well. I mean, really right. all local government levels, it's not a popular thing to do. Yeah, I think last, this past this school year, there was about 18 or 19 school districts that overrode. It was over like 98, attempted, 99%. Right, yeah. attempted an override. I think only 12 of those passed yeah, uh, the overrides. Uh, but there was like, you know, overall approval uh, budget votes of 99.7%, like yeah. the highest it's been in a decade. Right. So one of the, one of the uh, I guess, the, the side effects of the tax cap is higher approval ratings for budgets or higher uh, voter approval for the budgets, but also lower voter participation. There's been a steady drop in the number of voters, both yes voters and no voters, for, for bu school budgets. Really? Is, yeah. that, I mean, what, is that attributable just to... Since the tax cap period. has gone into effect, yeah. there's been a steady decline in the number of people voting on school budgets. Why? Because either one, they're very satisfied with what the schools are presenting, right. or two, they figure the tax cap is in place and we're not concerned about how much they're going to raise. That's really interesting. Well, we're going to have to have you back on to talk a little bit more about sure. this later on, especially right. as school districts uh, start to enact their budgets since back to school almost in two months. So, yes. Michael Borges, thanks very much for your thanks time. Thanks for Appreciate having it. me.